Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. Please subscribe to our channel if you are watching for the first time. Click the notification bell and like our videos. Please help us to share the videos to reach many more people. And to all our subscribers, please allow me to thank you in a very special way. Ladies and gentlemen, defending William Samoy Ruto is becoming very difficult. William Ruto has opened an all-out war with anybody who has got a contrary opinion to his. Recently, he warned the judiciary, he warned the judges who are making rulings and verdicts that go against his wishes. Before that, he had said that people will know that he's got a sword to deal with them. Now, the statements against the judges attracted a lot of condemnation and every Kenyan of goodwill castigated William Samoy Ruto. There are only a few, let me call them a clique, who are stuck with him. Mostly the members of parliament from Mount Kenya. I've seen people like Alice Wahome still trying to perpetuate the narrative of sabotage against William Ruto's development agenda. I've seen Kimani Chungwa, Dindi Nyoro. Mount Kenya, let me tell you this. Your leadership, your members of parliament, have been given a trap. There is a trap that William Ruto has set. And this is a trap called succession politics. They will not talk about our tetea because they have been told that they must support William Ruto so that when William Ruto is done with his two terms, then they will take over. If you ask Ndindi Nyoro or Kimani Ichungwa, or Rigadi Gashagwa, or Moses Kuria for that matter. Each and every one of them has been told that they are next in line. They are the hair apparel. And this is slavery. Because for five years, they will be dancing to William Ruto's tune because they want to inherit his constituency, to inherit the presidency. But let me tell you, betrayal is one thing that we are not very unfamiliar to. We've seen betrayal before. Don't come back and cry to Kenyans that you've been betrayed. But those are the only people who are struggling to sanitize William Ruto, struggling to malign Uhuru Kenyatta as the one who is perpetuating the court cases and funding them. But people are really divided. The Law Society of Kenya castigated William Ruto and even called for a mass protest. The opposition, including those who have never been friendly to the courts or to Madame Kuomi, they were united and they were fighting for the good of the Kenyans. One person who shocked many is Mutai Nguni. Mutai Nguni offered unsolicited support in an environment where everyone, including those who have been supporting William Ruto, and he said, Dear Ruto, you have... He went to his Twitter handle and said, Dear Ruto, the judiciary is corrupt to the core, and from the core. Kiraitu Murungi fired 30 judges in 2 or 3 for corruption. As the executive, you must drain this swamp. Do it for the people despite the people. One man with good with God is in the majority. Drain the swamp. That was his advice. One person was watching very closely. The fiery Meguna Meguna. You know how Meguna takes a position when he believes in something. And he didn't spare Mutai Nguni. This is what Meguna said. Mutai Nguni, you are not qualified to advise anyone about corruption. You are rotten to the core. <laughs> you stole public money through the NYS scandal, but you haven't been punished for it. You intentionally burnt down your house a few years ago and stole insurance money. The two sons of Kenyans. One is a barrister. By the way, Muguna likes to be called a barrister. The other is a political scientist. Mutai Nguni is telling William Ruto, 
Do it for the people dis despite the people. Do it for the people who want it, who want it, despite the people who are opposed to it. And he's said, telling him, drain the swamp. He's talking about something that happened in 203. We are in 2024 for that matter. 11 years down the line, Mutai Mwini wants to tell us that we have not undergone any radical changes. And Biguna did not have these kind words for him. Biguna is saying that he stole NYS scandal and there was a time when his house was burnt and people really exposed Mutai Nguyen. And they said he burnt his house for some sympathy and some political mileage. One common thing between Miguna and Nguyen Mutai is that they love tweets. They always tweet. And I say sometimes they are psycho fans. Miguna was opposed to William Ruto. And because of his political differences with the Raila Muludinga, he switched camp and he is now supporting William Ruto. Nguni Mutahi was with Uhuru Kenyatta. And for some reasons that only him can explain, he switched camp. Now, one good thing about Miguna Miguna is that Miguna is sometimes alive to some facts. When you cross your line, when you, when you go beyond the border, he will call out on you. And he will not spare you. You know, there's something that we really need to put, you know, crystal clear. There could be some elements of corrupt judges. There could be because we know Kenya is corrupt from the police. We know there are police. They have been caught red-handed taking bribes. From where you sit, from where you stay, you see them collecting money from the bars and wines and spirits around you. These are things that we know. But there are good elements and bad elements in it. That is the same thing with the judges. Up to date, if you ask many Kenyans, they will tell you that they strongly believe that the Supreme Court did something as a result of corruption and intimidation. But be that as it may, ladies and gentlemen, Kenya must be ruled and governed by the rule of law. Just recently, William Ruto is the one who formed a commission of inquiry against Judge Chitemwe. And the verdict was out, and that judge, judge has been relieved of his duty. You remember how Sonko, I, I understand that Sonko is his relative, confessed against him, and he has gone home. He did not go home because William Ruto stood on top of mountains and valleys and shouting about how corrupt he was. No. There was a legal complaint against him. The, 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 the rightful procedure was followed. A commission of inquiry was formed. And they looked into his conduct. Whether it is, a, you know, machination politically, I don't know. But at least there is a procedure. When the, he wanted to kick out the Cherera 4, he quickly convened a, a, a commission of inquiry or a committee. And they looked into the conduct, of course, maliciously. But at least it is written somewhere, there are records, that the Commission of Inquiry sat down and this is what they did. You cannot, as a president, go on shouting and threatening your other arm of government. The executive is not the only government, the only arm of the government. We have the judiciary and the legislature. The only advantage that the executive has is that they, 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 they control, or it controls the police and the military. And so, there is that kind of authority that he has. That is why Parliament has been muzzled and they cannot talk. But you cannot threaten our judges. There should be the right way, or the, the right procedure of uh, clipping down those who you feel are corrupt. The right procedure. Number two, if we allow the government or the president to start threatening people, he will deal with the judiciary and next it will be those who are supporting him now. And they will be crying out for help. When Madame Kome gave Ruto his win and called out on Raila, Raila's quest for justice as wild goose chase, she did not know that just one year down the line she will be the victim. And I was shocked that it is Raila who was leading the match to castigate William Ruto for trying to intimidate the Kome team. 
and I think she must learn. Those who are supporting William Ruto, very soon, the axe will fall on you. An injustice to one person is an injustice to all, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you that. If you think I'm lying, ask the Kikuyu youth who are told they were hustlers, who are told that when people went to the streets, it was their businesses that we were targeting. Recently, they were taken to a small space, a small cell, over 300 of them, almost suffocating. Just because they are Kikuyu youths. And then they were baptized. They were no longer hustlers, but Mungiki. Some of them were saying, we just, we were from our errands and businesses. Then we were caught up in the melee. And here we are in police cells. They did not understand that one day, the government will not be following up Otieno and Onyango and Wanyama, but they will be looking for Kamau and Joroge. Jor I mean, let us always try to support that which follows the law. An impunity on someone is an impunity to all of us. Let us learn. Mutai Nguni belongs to a class of people who are full of bootlicking. The president is always right. You cannot look at the president and tell, tell him, no, you are wrong here. But... It happens even when, we're people, when people are fighting to kick out the colonial masters. We have those who collaborated with the, with the masters. Even in places of work, you've seen these people who will always go behind you and they start talking about you with your bosses. These are characters and for a community and a society to be complete, we have such people. They, they fight for their own good self-aggrandizement. As long as mimi ni mepata yangu, haijalishi wengine wanaendelea aje. Umepewa yako kidogo, ungine wanaendelea na nja, so unatetia the president. But it is not good at all for our country to grow in this century. We have to call out on the president. I remember sometimes Nguyen Mutai used, used to call out on the president. Very many people have been asking me this question. If Raila was in power, would we be calling him out? Let me tell you something. An emphatic yes. Even if it was my brother who was sitting on that seat and is not following the law, he is increasing taxes. He is threatening people. He is uh, listening to IMF and the World Bank and listening to, to Joe Biden. I will call him out because it is not about your brother. It is not about Modua Nyumba. It is not about Odua Adu. It is about a president who unites all Kenyans. That is all we want. Today I have repeated that if William Ruto had reduced the taxes, and the cost of living had been reduced, if at all he had lived to the fact of all the promises that he gave to Kenyans, we would be talking this way. But he's pushing people to talk. If you think I'm joking or I'm lying, look at now Kome. Did you even imagine that Kome would release a statement against William Ruto? And it is not about William Ruto, the father of Shalene Ruto. No, this is about William Ruto, the president of Kenya. You see, there are two different people. We are not against, we don't have any personal vendetta against William Ruto, the husband to Rachel. No. We respect him. By the way, where we come from, we are taught to, res we are, we are, we are taught to respect others. And if, if, if you remove the presidency out of William Ruto, we will respect him as a person. But as long as he occupies that office, being maintained by taxpayers' money, with a a strong secretariat, security, that money, allowances, all the privileges. We must speak out because it is our money. We have a right. We have a constitution that he sought to protect. And we must call him out. Look, if people were quiet even after threatening the judges, what would happen? A country that is never ruled by the, by the, the governed by the rule of law will plunge into anarchy where everyone now wants to do things their own way. You cannot say that you support the independence of a judiciary, of, of our courts, then you give limits that Msipofanya hii tutafanya hii. And so ladies and gentlemen, Mutai Nguyen and the clique of people who want to, boot, to lick boots and want to appear as if they are good, they are detrimental to our society. We need to speak out against an injustice. And this is why I want to say this. Meguna Meguna does not want Raila, they deferred. But when the president that he has been supporting oversteps his mandate, he will call him out. And he has really deconstructed Nguyen Mutai. 
Winnie Muta is telling the president to drain the swamp. How? Follow the correct mechanism. We are not against weeding out the corrupt judges. But corruption is not only in the judiciary. The executive is full of corrupt people. People have been taken from jail. People who, are, who had been jailed. The Aurora Kimbarer dam case was done with and the judge who was handling the case said it was sabotage. So let us have a holistic way of dealing with corruption in our country. Selective justice will not help us. Gwini Mutahi, when history will be written, I don't know which side of history will you be. Are you for the people who are oppressed or you are dining and sleeping with someone, the oppressor? I don't know. But ladies and gentlemen, Miguna, Miguna and Gwini Mutahi said it right. Now, I want to finish by this analogy that uh, Gabriel Guda said, that box-to-box -box midfielder, Miguna Miguna, with a two-footed tackle right inside the six-yard area, leaving Mutai Nguyi clutching at his ankle, wailing for a penalty. The referee runs to the VAR booth, says no foul, and waves play on. So the game, must, <laughs> the game is on, Miguna and Nguyi Mutai, but William Ruto must understand that his statements has really divided the country. Because he has decided that he's not going to spare anyone, people have decided not to spare him. They are calling him out. This is a country that is governed. He's not the only person in Kenya. He's just one person. We have millions and they must be led. William Ruto must understand that the rule of law must be followed. That is my check.